Today we're going to be talking about extreme values of functions. And we have an absolute maximum value on an interval within our domain if and only if the function value at that f of c, where we're going to have our maximum, is greater than every other point around it. And we have a minimum where f of c is less than every other number around it. Okay, so find the absolute extreme of the function y equals x squared on the domain. Now remember, y equals x squared is a parabola. I kind of expect you guys to know what that function looks like. So looking at that, from negative infinity to infinity, so for all numbers, all x's, we only have an absolute minimum of zero. Now remember value means the y value. So yes, our minimum happens at the point zero, zero, but the absolute min is zero. Now it says absolute extrema. You need to tell me there is no absolute max. You're recognizing that you understand what those are and that you need to tell me that there is none of them. Okay, now absolute extrema on the function y equals x squared on our domain from 0 to 3. So we'd start at 0, 0. When I plug in 3, we'd be at the point 3, 9. So Absolute min, the smallest value we have, is zero. We have an absolute max. What's the highest point? Our highest point is nine. Now, on the open interval, not including those endpoints, because I can get infinitely close to this absolute min, I can get infinitely close to the absolute max, we would have none. Or no absolute max or min. And I was saying that you can get infinitely close to it. We get infinitely close, but we're never going to equal. I'm never going to equal that 9 number, not that 9 value. So this value on the open interval is none. Okay, extreme value theorem. So, if we have a continuous function on an interval, then our function is going to have both a maximum value and a minimum value. Because I, if I have a closed interval, a set amount of x values, I'm going to have an absolute max, I'm going to have an absolute min. So, here at a, we have an absolute minimum at D. We're going to have an absolute maximum at E, which I clicked early. We're going to have a local minimum, meaning in relation to the points around it, in relation to the points around this point, I'm at a minimum value, but it's not as small as our absolute minimum. And then up here, that's a local maximum. Again, again, in relation to the points around it. It's the highest point, but it's not as high as our absolute maximum, which is over here. And then lastly, we have another local minimum. So you can have more than one local minimum, but you can only have one absolute max and absolute min. And again, a more specific definition for local extreme values. I sometimes call these relative. I think I taught out of a book once that used the word relative extreme values. So if you have a local maximum, meaning that on an interval, you have a local maximum if this point is higher than all of the other points around that value. And a local minimum, if this 
function value is higher than all the other points on that value. Okay, so now looking at some graphs and identifying where we have local maximum and local minimum. So looking at the first example, which one out of all of these points is the highest point? Right there at x equals c, we have our highest point. Absolute min. D is our lowest point. Local maximum. Now locally, around which points? Well, in relation to all the points, B is locally high. Our local min is x equals a. And then is this is the extreme value theorem hold true for this? Yes. Because f of x is continuous. Now looking at B. B is a little bit more complicated. So an absolute max. Where is our absolute maximum point? Absolute maximum point happens here at the x value of B. Now absolute min. I tried to make it so that you could see that A was a little bit less then what C was, so that's going to be x equals A. Now locally, around, in relation to the points around it, B is going to be a local max, and then a local min is going to be at x equals C. And does our extreme value theorem hold? No. Because f of x is not continuous. Your function needs to be continuous for extreme value theorem to hold. Okay. The next few slides are going to be super important and they're basically laying the groundwork for our entire chapter. Local extreme values. A function has a local maximum or local minimum at an interior point when our derivative equals zero. That's why I was having you guys find those horizontal tangent lines so much. So if you think about it, if I have some function here, this point right here is a local maximum. I change from positive slopes or positive derivative to a negative derivative. Here, we're going to have a horizontal tangent line. That's a local maximum, and that's where our slope equals zero. Here we would have a local minimum. Slope of our tangent line equals zero. Critical points and stationary points. Honestly, I use these almost interchangeably. A critical point is when our derivative equals zero or our derivative doesn't exist. And that's super important. Derivative is zero or derivative doesn't exist. That's going to be a critical point. We're going to be finding these a lot this chapter. And then a stationary point is just when our derivative doesn't equal zero. You can remember stationary. When you're stationary, you're not moving. So your rate of change is equal to zero versus critical, anything when your derivative doesn't exist or is equal to zero. Okay, so find the extreme values of the function on the interval and where they occur. Okay, so first thing you have to find is first thing you find is your derivative. 1 minus 2 cosine x. And you set your derivative equal to 0 because we're finding those critical points, those stationary points. You're finding the key pieces of your function. So that's when the cosine equals 1 half. When does the cosine equal 1 half? Cosine equals 1 half at pi over 3. Now, 
on our interval. They give us an interval restriction. Okay, you have to find the value at your critical point. So I have to find h of pi over 3. And then I have to find the end values. That's that um, extreme value theorem. I have to look at the endpoints and see which one's the highest, which one's the lowest between the endpoints and my critical points. So I plug in all of these values. And you're finding the original function, because I want to know on this original function what's my highest, what's my lowest. So I plug in pi over 3 minus 2 times the sine of pi over 3, which is equal to pi over 3 minus root 3. And then in my calculator, I found that to be negative 0.685. I plug in pi over, negative pi over 4. That's negative pi over 4 minus 2 times the sine of negative pi over 4. So that's negative pi over 4 plus root 2, which again in my calculator ended up being 0.629. Then I plug in pi over 2, so I get pi over 2 minus 2 times the sine of pi over 2, which is pi over 2 minus 2, which again in my calculator was negative 0.429. Now again, I want to know where the extreme values occur. Those extreme values are the absolute max and the absolute min. Okay, so which one of these values is the highest at negative pi over 4? So that's my absolute max. Which one of these values is the smallest? Well, negative 0.685 is the smallest, so that is my absolute min. So let's make sure I've answered everything that they want me to answer. I found the extreme values. My absolute min is this value of negative 0.685. My absolute max is 0.6. Two nine, and then identify any critical points that are not stationary points. Remember, critical points was when our derivative equaled zero, or the derivative did not exist. This derivative always exists, so all our points are stationary. And by mean all, I mean just pi over 3. Our next example. Okay, so let's find our derivative. Now you want to simplify your derivatives a little bit here. That's going to make your life easy. Now, is this function, meaning the derivative, ever going to be equal to zero? No. But is the derivative ever not exist? Well, we can't have zero on the bottom. So that's going to be a critical point. This is not a stationary point. But it is a critical point. So then, when you're finding the extreme values, when they give you an interval, again, remember you have to find h of negative 2, h of 0, any critical points, and then h of 3. Meaning you find the two endpoints, and then you find any critical points you had. So... I use my calculator to calculate these. I'm okay with that if you guys use your calculator. h of negative 2. 
plugging into my original function. That's going to be negative 1.516. Remember, we're rounding the three decimal places. h of 0 is 0. And then h of 3 is 1.933. So we have an absolute max of 1.933. That's our highest value at x equals 3. Remember, extreme values are those y numbers. And then we have our absolute min of the value of negative 0.1516 at x equals negative 2. Okay, that's all we have for today. Please make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.